you remember anything? You had their guns drawn. You were ordered to the ground. You had a knife in your hand. This video contains the interrogation of a girl who was caught after killing her foster mother by stabbing her almost 200 times. Lisa Nopel and her husband Kevin were the loving parents of three children. It was by all accounts a stable and happy household. Lisa was a social worker who worked in the sex abuse department while Kevin was often on the road as a trucker. It seemed like the perfect environment for a foster child. So when Sabrina Zunik was placed with him, it seemed as if her life was finally on the right track. Sabrina Zunik was the daughter of a couple who struggled with drug and alcohol addiction, leading her to spend years in and out of the foster system. When she was finally placed with Kevin and Lisa, the five of them instantly became a family. That all changed in December of 2011, when Zunik began to believe that Lisa gave her daughter's preferential treatment. The two began to fight frequently, with Zunik becoming closer to Kevin. Witnesses say that there was something uncomfortable and odd about the relationship. The two spent quite a bit of time together and would frequently make inappropriate sexual jokes aimed at the other. Several people recall Zunik expressing that they needed to get rid of Lisa, implying that Kevin shared her feelings. On November 16, 2012, police received a 911 call from 13-year-old Megan, screaming that Zunik was murdering her mother. When police arrived on the scene, they found Zunik drenched in blood and holding the 15-inch kitchen knife she had used to stab Lisa nearly 200 times. For me, please. You remember, you remember me, right? Mm -hmm. I'm Jim Vitale. I'm a policeman. This is uh, Detective Parmer, Detective Rodwater. They work with me. Hi. Right. Well, we're going to sit down and talk for a moment. I asked them to come with me because we all kind of been working a little bit. Um, probably wondering what happened and we're, we're wondering what, what happened here. We have some routine paperwork we have to go over real quick. Um, partner's going to explain that to you. I'm sure he's <coughs> watching we, TV and that. Before we ask you any questions, okay, we got to give you, your, you know, some rights, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, what I'm going to do is when I when we give you these rights, I was going to ask you the initials next to these rights, okay? Um, It'll be fine in the interview all that. Even if you kind of kind of hold it like this and kind of do it like that, okay? Um, <clears throat> just so you know, you are being uh, suspected of being involved in a homicide, okay? You're uh, you do have the right to remain silent. You understand that? Yes. Okay. Anything anything you say can't and will be against you in court of law. You understand that? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have him with you during questioning. You understand that? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a higher lawyer, won't be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you desire. You understand that? Yes. Okay. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering any questions at any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand that? Okay. What you need to do is just initial right there. Yeah, I can't see. Oh, yeah. It's yours, glasses. That's just what we read to you right here. You need to put your initials there, please. I'm going to put them here for you. What's your initials? SB. SB? SB. SB, okay. You understand I, everything that I've read to you today? Mm -hmm. Okay. What grade are you in right now? 12th. 12th grade? What kind of grades do you get in school? 3.3. 3.3? You uh, read and write the English language? Mm -hmm. Do you read and write the English language? Yes. Okay, you understand everything that I'm saying to you right now? Yes. Um, you can just kind of scribble. Can you can, you, can you grip a, a pen at all and try to write your name? Like you did when you were at the hospital. Yeah. When you were signed your discharge sheet. And this is just right there. Saying that I understand these. Correct. Do you understand your yep. rights? Do you understand your rights? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is not saying that if I want the attorney, right? No, absolutely not. Did you ever get that one? Yes, I did. Second one? Second one, yep. Zunik is being read her rights, and while she seems to understand, her speech is hesitant and slurred. This may be due to medication. 
wanted to remind you once again, my new merch shop is up. StrangerLabel.com is full of relatable designs like the unstable and the mentally checked out t-shirts, as well as other cool items like the all-seeing beanie and the stranger socks. Every purchase helps support this channel, and you can even write me a short message on the purchase page. I'll be reading every single message that comes with any order, big or small. So head to StrangerLabel.com and get whatever you want. And with that said, let's get back into the case. So, Green, you want anything to drink? Yes, yes. What would you like? Uh, that doesn't... Water? Water or some kind of a <coughs> soft drink or what? I don't know. I'm sorry. Water would be fine. Water's okay? Okay. So what uh what do you uh what do you recall? From yesterday? Mm-hmm. Getting done with my homework? I don't know. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And what was that? And we're at home? Mm-hmm. Would anything unusual happen? I don't know. Everything went fine according to what I knew of. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened? Starting from? Starting from when you got home from school yesterday. <coughs> okay. No. Um, I got home. I went to do my home. Then we had hamburger helper. And then I went back to doing my homework. They been doing our homework for like one. I went upstairs, no, it was like 12. I went upstairs to try to go to sleep. I couldn't go to sleep, so I went to go get some Advil. Mm -hmm. I have a girlfriend. Because my head hurts because I have really bad headaches. I don't know how they feel like. And after that... Where, I, where, where did you take um, ibuprofen from? In my son Kevin's bathroom. That's where? where I tell. Kevin and Lisa's bedroom. Held. Kevin and Lisa's bedroom? Okay. Um, where Where is it at? Is it actually in a medicine cabinet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it on the first shelf, the second shelf, the third shelf? Do you recall? I believe that there's only two shelves. Okay. It's on the bottom. On the bottom shelf? <laughs> so you went, you went in her bed. Is there a bathroom in her bedroom? Mm hmm. It's connected. Mm hmm. Was uh, Lisa still awake? I don't, I don't know. I just remember going in there, having the bottle, starting to shake it to get the medicine, and then it was gone from there. Thank you. Okay. Do you remember what the what the bottle said? Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Wait, there was orange. Okay. Are you are you allowed in the bathroom? Only um to get Advil or something like that. Uh -huh. I call it Advil. I'm told right. it's ibuprofen. Other than that, no, not unless they're there or, you know, we're told to. So what yes. would Lisa say to you then, when she saw you in there? I don't know. I don't know if Lisa... You ears? No. I don't remember anything at that point on. What do you remember? Everything except... Were you taking any little illegal narcotics yesterday? No. I don't do drugs. You don't do drugs? When was the last time you did drugs? Three and a half years ago. Three and a half years ago? Okay. Um, you have not had any, any illegal drugs since then? They not only need to know about Zunik's possible drug use, in case it relates to the crime, but also to determine if it is going to affect her answers. Okay. Um, you were at home all, all night yesterday? Okay. Um, after you ate dinner, did you, uh, uh, did you have this opportunity to say goodbye to Kevin? I was at the computer desk. You're at the computer desk? I don't know. I went to the living room also because I was printing my bird slit. I mean, I was in the living room, I was in the kitchen, and I was in the office. That's it. Excuse me. I mean, I believe so. Yeah, he just said bye. He always says bye to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we either say bye, Chabala, he like kisses him. Well. Okay. You had an argument or anything with Lisa last night? No. No? Everything was fine. Everything was fine. Okay. 
Have you had these type of issues in the past where you just don't remember things? I I don't I'm not positive. I mean I know I was in my other group homes. When I was in a fight with other people I blacked out. Mm -hmm. I don't remember it. Have you ever been checked? What do you mean? Like, like have you medically? Yeah. Yeah, I go to snatchers. Okay, and you take um. Vivans for once a day. Okay, mm -hmm. and what are those meds for? Yeah, Vivans is for ADHD. Okay. Oxygen is for mood stabilizers, less anxiety. So kind of stabilizes your moods. Mm -hmm. Okay. They yeah, haven't been changed. But it has nothing to do with anything neurological or anything, correct? No, they thought okay. I had like many seizures because of my headaches. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're all kind of app testing. Mm-hmm. I found out him. So I am on this med, but I'm not because I'm taking it because I ran out. Which but one? I forgot what it's called. But it's just. What's it for? For headaches. Mm -hmm. So I went to a neurologist. Like, uh, like for like migraine headaches? Yeah. Okay. Like I would, I'd be in my bed, fatal position, crying, lights mm -hmm. off, no music. No. Right. You, you mentioned you've had at your group home incidences where you blacked out. Have those been physical? What do you mean? Like, did you get in fights? People? Yeah, but it wasn't me hitting them. Mm -hmm. If I get a blow to the head, I'm gone. Because mm -hmm. I have my head. Have you hit people before? And I, rem and I remembered it? Like, in the blackout? Yes. But not, I don't, I don't sore fights. Mm -hmm. Ever since my first group home, I was 14, I stopped fighting ever since then. What, what do you think happened to your hands? I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that I, I'm being charged with homicide. Well, I'm investigating that. Do you remember blood being all over you? No, but I can see it all over my legs. There's blood all over your face, or blood all over your body. That's why you're not in your clothes. Do you remember your clothes? I don't remember. Zunik had been instructed by her foster father to plead insanity if she was caught, and she has taken his advice. Memory loss is one of the top lies a suspect will use if they cannot escape the scene and attempt to cover their actions. I'm pretty sure you do. Yeah. Remember what you were doing? Prior to getting to the ambulance? No. In Lisa's room? Getting mad. With my headache. And that's why I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Was Haley there? We were getting meds. Was yeah. Haley in her room with uh, Lisa sleeping? No. She was not? No, he has her over on the other okay. side of the house. Do you know what time Haley went to bed? I don't. She's usually up and down. I think around. Okay. She usually is passed out by the moment. Oh, were you still working on your project? Are you working on the laptop or something there? Yes. That project for, for school? British literature. For what? British literature. Okay. Okay, so what time, what time does, uh, what time does Haley usually go down to bed? Well, they try and put her to bed at like nine, ten. Okay. So fall asleep at eleven or twelve. Okay. So last night you were in the in the office area working on your project. Yes. Haley went to bed in her room. Okay. Uh, what about Megan? She's always in bed. Okay. By the time I get upstairs. All right. So she was up in her upstairs sleeping. Yeah, we were both upstairs in our rooms. We had separate rooms. Okay. So what happened after uh, after she went to bed? Um, is Lisa still still awake, or is Lisa sleeping at this time while you're finishing your project? When after after Haley goes to bed and after Megan goes to bed? I I don't know. I have my earphones on the whole time. I don't know if she's. What are you listening to? Music. Yeah. On on what? Well, that's it. That's not going to be a Okay. So you're listening to some music. Um, you're not sure what's going on around you, basically, no. right? <coughs> and 
at some point in time, you say approximately midnight, yeah. you uh, go upstairs and try to go to bed, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, after some point in time, you don't know how long how long it's, it's been, you can't go to bed because you've got a headache, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And the only place that there is any type of Advil or aspirin or ibuprofen is in Kevin and Lisa's bedroom, correct? In the cabin right. over the toilet. Okay. So you go downstairs, you go into Lisa and Kevin's room, you go open up the medicine cabinet, white bottle that says ibuprofen, how many did you take? Three. Three. How many milligrams are they? That's 250, I don't know. Okay. I just know what I take from my Okay. It's the only thing we had. Alright, so you take uh, you take three of those. Um, after you take three of them, where do you go from there? I don't know. That's what I remember, that's all. The only thing I remember after that was the ambulance. And the mouth. And the funny guy who messed up my hands. And there. And the house, right? Because you're always told me so. What happened to your hands? I mean, did you see when they were at the at the hospital what what your hands looked like? No. You didn't see it. So you don't know what's wrong with your hands. They were been sleeping and cut because they told me that. They were cut. It's cut pretty bad. Five stitches. How many? Five. Five in your what right hand? Two and one and three and the other. Oh, I don't know okay. which one is for Okay. Did you see the stitches? Did you see what they did? No. You, you have no idea how that could have happened? No. Nothing? Lisa Knopfel's death was violent, but she was able to leave defensive wounds on Zunik. <coughs> I don't know how I got blood all over me in this afternoon. Was there anybody else in the house besides the, the four of you ladies? No, no one else was there. No visitors. Nobody came by to see you. No. Nothing. Okay. All the doors were locked up. From what I know. Okay. Where, when you let the dogs out, where do they go? Out the back way? They go out the front. Oh, they go the front way. Okay. Um. What time does Kevin usually get home from? work. Does it vary or does he have a regular schedule that he's done? It's and kind of fluctuating but in between an hour and a half hour. It's usually like 5 five thirty, and on a good day it's like 4.30 depending on the stroke. In the morning that's when he gets, so he drives pretty so much at night time? Oh yeah, he's uh, night shift. Is that a, a GFS mm -hmm. driver? Okay. Double trailer. Oh, double trailer. Okay. And he has a specific route like up towards Michigan or something or? I believe so. He used to go to Springfield, but then they had owner changes, so. Okay. So then uh, he would get back, and what's he do? He used to go to bed? Yeah. Does he work? Does he do, do anything else? Mm. He gets back up at like 6.20, and then drops me off at school and goes to the bus garage for the second time. And drives buses for one week. Oh, he does? Oh, okay. So he drives you to school, and then he gets a bus. Yeah, he goes to the bus garage. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're you're going to the same school that he drives for. No, I, he does for the middle school. Okay. And I'm in the high school. Oh, okay. All right. So then, what time does Lisa usually get up to go to work? I have no idea. I'm never there. Are you never there? Okay. I assume I think she has to be there at like eight or nine. I don't know, but um. She gets like an hour up before. Yeah. I believe. I, I'm not positive. Okay. And when you come home, how do you get home from school? Either Kevin, because I do stay after school for help with homework, or I get on the bus. Okay. Is Lisa home when you get home or after? All the time on the day. Okay. Because if she's working, what is it called? If she's an on call, is what you call it. Okay. Then <coughs> She'll be there till like five or six yeah. if she doesn't have you know, a call. Okay. And then usually it'll be four fifteen, four thirty. Okay. 
How do you get along with Tobin? Tobin and me are cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's my one that helps me out. Mm -hmm. Because this is Megan to deal with. Megan has in mental instabilities herself. Okay. And so we made agreements a long time ago that if I need anything, that I could go to Kevin. Mm -hmm. And if it was major that she needed to be involved in, then he would ask, but not to be concerned about small things. Mm -hmm. Because it's already stretching her out. It's her job and Haley and Megan. The relationship between Zunick and Lisa Noffel was close in the beginning. This changed when Zunick began to feel like Lisa cared more for her own daughters. It would be interesting to discover whether or not this idea was planted and enforced by Kevin Noffel, who Zunick began to grow closer to as her relationship with Lisa deteriorated. How about um, with Lisa? How you dealing with her? Me and Lisa have never been the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never tried to hurt her, never had any thoughts of hurting her. Yeah, it's been emotional and mental abuse from her to me. Mm -hmm. She put her hands on me, not fighting, mm -hmm. but restraining me so I wouldn't give an iPod to her. And I don't know. I, I don't know. She never seemed to like me, and she's been wanting me out of the house. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on how Lisa is not alive now? What? What is your What is your thoughts on that? That she is not alive. Uh, I, maybe you didn't understand. That's That's what we're talking to you about. Say anything to me. Mm-hmm. You said that. You can't tell me I did it. Yes. I, I, most of that blood was probably hers. That's why we need you to concentrate and think about what happened. Zunick feigns ignorance about Lisa's death. It doesn't move the detectives. Lisa was stabbed over a hundred times, and Zunick had to know that it would be enough to kill her. There's always two sides of every story, and we want to know what you had to say about it. And we know you were there. You know, there were officers that got to the house after the, you know, they were called. So, we just need you to focus on what happened. You know you got, you were doing homework, and you know you got yourself to the bedroom to get the medicine. What you need to do now is bring it all together and think real hard about maybe what happened next. And then that'll explain how you got some wounds to your hands. Okay? What's gonna happen to Haley Megan and Kevin? Hmm? What's gonna happen to Haley Megan and Kevin? Haley, Megan and Kevin are all safe. They're they're at home at right now. Haley's with Judy. Alright? And Megan's with their dead. And Kevin's with Judy also. Anything coming back? No. Recall coming out of the bedroom with a knife in your hand? No. Well, it's, you, know, you had a knife. And you stabbed police, son. I did. Yes, you did. And, and, and Megan called the police. I know it can't be true. Bree, it is. I'm sorry. I've never been a murderer. Mm -hmm. we, we need to know, that's why we're asking you to, to, to think about it. We need to know how to help you, okay? We don't know that until we know we we can get some facts and find out what's going on, and that will give us the best course on how how to proceed from here and help you help the family and and go on from there. So what do you want me to eat? I don't. Just we don't truth. want you to say anything except the truth, and we just want you to think about it because something happened by the time you were getting your meds 
in the bathroom there for your headache. And then and then all then one of our police officers arriving. So something happened in between that time and we're just trying to get to the to the truth of that and find out what happened. I don't know. This is really good. Yes, yeah, sir. Sorry. I don't believe this. That's why we're here, trying to try and put it all together. Can I just? Yeah, I'll get something out. Try to figure out what happened. Okay. We know that you and you and Lisa had a struggle with a knife. Lisa was stabbed multiple times. The new one rolls, please. Oh, oh here, here. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Nobody else was hurt. Nobody else was hurt. Thank goodness. Has there been a, a maybe an argument between you and Lisa? Maybe it had something to do with your iPad or anything like that? That was a long time ago. A long time ago? And yeah, the cops were called on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you, did you get your iPad back? An iPod. Uh, yeah. Or iPod, whatever it is. Did you got it back? <laughs> where, where, is, where should it be at the house? My book bag. In your book bag? Okay. My pocket. This pocket. Okay. My you, have a fa you have a Facebook account? Yes. You do? Were you on Facebook last night? Yes. Talk to anybody? Yes, but not much. Not much? Were you instant, instant messaging anybody? Yes. Who? This kid named Bobby. What's Bobby's last name? I don't know. Do you know him? Yeah. Where, how do you know him? Skating. I'm skating? No, I just skate. You go to school with him? No. No? How old is he? 15 or 16. Okay, so a little younger than you? Yeah. Okay. I'm usually just helping him. He has mental instability. Like, mm -hmm. suicide. Okay. Have you ever thought about homicidal or sui suicidal thoughts? No. I mean, a long time ago. I've okay. been stable for so long. I've never had any doubts like that. Were you taking were you taking medication for that? What? For having those type of thoughts? I mean, I guess it's contributed with the fluctuating mood. My bipolar it just screenshots down into depression. Okay. But I haven't had any problems. My meds have been constant since when I got there. I was on nine meds, and they're all very high dosages. Now I'm down to two. The two haven't changed in about six to eight. No. Or, it has to be a little bit more than four months. I haven't, I've been completely stable. So, four, four plus months, you haven't had any Change any changes in medication or anything like that? No. You've been taking your medications like you're supposed to? Yes. Have you hit your head sometime and, and not told anybody about it? It may have. That's the only possible thing that could have happened, but I don't remember it. Because if I'm going to black out, then I have to have that to hit my head. So in second grade, I fell out of my head on the asphalt, went into a concussion, for a screw pump, got attacked like three times. All of those went into a You ever have nightmares about being attacked? No. Did you ever talk to anybody about your concern about being attacked? It's not really a concern anymore since I'm out of that place. Okay. Do you feel safe where you're at now? Yes. With Lisa and Kevin? Yes. And Megan and yes. Haley? How'd you get along with Megan and Haley? Haley is my everything. I love her. Okay. Megan, she's my boy also. 
So me and her were up and down, but I've never done anything to her, ever, nor at thoughts. I mean, I'm a very nice, giving person, but they will tell you that when like someone said, I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything to hurt people. And Megan constantly treats me like complete crap, but I go back to her and I help her with things. So I'm accepting of people. Get where she's coming from with my bullet. I was there too, I told her so. Have you ever had any discussions with any of your therapist or anybody like that as far as, uh, you know, any type of thoughts that you may have had or may have had? Like against somebody? Right. I haven't had thoughts against anybody. From all accounts, the relationship that Zunik had with the other girls was unremarkable. There was the occasional squabble, but nothing that would be out of the ordinary between siblings. This made the murder all the easier. Zunik was not a typically violent person. She would wake up, come towards me, or she would yell and say who it is, or she would just not say anything. Did she was sleeping when you went in to get the meds? Yeah. Or she, was she reading the book? I don't know. Were there any lights on in the room? No. It was all glare from the alarm clocks. Okay. There was no glow light from the iPad or no. TV wasn't on? No okay. reading light or anything for if she was you know, reading a book. I don't her reading. Mm -hmm. okay. She doesn't read often. She says she does. But I never see her read. Mm -hmm. But that's just from my point of view. I don't know. Did you take any medicine? I know you talked about getting ibuprofen. Do you know if you've ever even taken it? Yeah, ibuprofen. Yeah. I believe so. Mm -hmm. I know when I got to the hospital, I saw it adding. Where do you think you got the knife from? I don't know you might got the knife. Yeah. And you had a knife. I, I don't believe it. This is true. You remember when we came to the house, you had the knife in your hand. Are you sure it wasn't self-defense? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But two police officers there that saw you with the knife and, and ordered you to drop it. Did I? It? Well, yes. Why do you say that so iffy? You did. I well, said it like that because if they hadn't, you could, you could have been hurt. You threw the knife down and they made you get on the floor and put handcuffs on you. Do you, recall, you that? do you recall that part of it there? I re I, the little bit that I recall being on the floor drooling, and then that's mm -hmm. it. You remember Megan <coughs> coming in? No. No? You remember Haley coming in? Megan and Haley were both there? Mm-hmm. Yep.
Nobody needs to see that. No. You're right. right. <laughs> I mean, it's just between you and Lisa. <laughs> Nobody else should have seen that. Zunik draws attention to a pain in her arm, likely to garner sympathy or avoid more questions. It is a stalling tactic at best because this issue isn't going away. You hurt anywhere else besides your hands? No. You're not injured anywhere else, just your hands? I have cuts going in another place. You know where the 
nights are in your house? Yes, but that's only because I either use them to cook or I put away the dishwasher. You call going in the kitchen last night and grabbed a knife? No. Zonik doubles down on the memory loss, but she can probably hear the skepticism in the detective's voices. Without any type of history of such events, this story carries little weight. I wasn't in that kitchen last night. I, I don't know which night it was. Do you, do you remember which one it was? I don't know. I used that. Do you know that knife? What it looks like. It's not just the length. Black handle? Probably 9 to 12 inches. Very sharp. Does it have rich edges or does it straight sharp? I believe it. Don't recall to be honest with you. You ever punched any holes in your wall? In no. your, well, you ever slammed your door open where the door handle? Those were both there from Megan. They're from before Megan? I got there. Okay. Mm -hmm. She has huge major issues with ink. Okay. She's pulled up on me multiple times and hit me and then claimed that I tried to stab her with a butter knife. Mm -hmm. And you can ask Laura, which is Lisa's sister, and Kevin. We were all there when they went to training. Mm -hmm. She made a big deal out of nothing. Because she got mad about Laura not wanting her waffles, and I was buttering mine. She goes to hit me on my arm, and I go to restrain her hands because she wasn't going to hit me more. Mm -hmm. I had a butter knife in my hand, didn't have time to put it down, but it was space. No, oh, it's the floor. She's trying to struggle mm -hmm. to get her hands away from mine. And by the time I have it, the knife is in between our two hands. Mm -hmm. And they claim that I tried to kill her. She's also claimed that Kevin tried to kill her. Without further documentation, it is difficult to determine if this event actually happened. Zunik is either lying or exaggerating to discredit her foster sister. Honestly, she has some huge mental instabilities. Mm -hmm. Because none of us ever has tried to hurt her or anybody else. Why do you suppose your clothes were dripping with blood? What is that noise? Uh, the release on the door and it just makes a loud click noise. You don't sure know how to do that. Zunik does not deny that she kills Lisa, only that she doesn't remember doing so. This lines up with her later claim that Kevin wanted her to go for a plea of insanity. It would never hurt anybody. Did you, did you stab Lisa? How else would she have died if you're telling me she... Well, I, I mean, you did or you didn't. That doesn't make sense. I must ask you if you did. I you don't know. know. Okay. Out, out of the out of the four of you that are in the house, okay. Get one's three. Get one's thirteen. You're eighteen, and then there's Lisa. Okay. 
what would be your explanation for what happened if, if you don't think you did this? I don't know. I can't think straight. Okay. Okay. What are you feeling right now? I mean, uh, what's your thoughts right now? I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's understandable. That's very understandable. What else? A lot of grief and sadness for her kids and Gavin and his sister. Does anybody else have to fight there in her life? What's, what's your thoughts towards Lisa right now? What do you mean? Well, I mean, what? Do you have any kind of any thoughts at all about what's happened to her? What are you talking about? Talking about Lisa. Lisa. You know, she's she's not living right now. I mean, what, what are your thoughts towards that? Do you have any thoughts towards it at all? How do you feel? I don't feel good about it. Okay. Well, that's what I'm asking. Okay. <laughs> This is my foster mom. How many foster moms have you had? Just her. Just her? Okay. That's what, since last year sometime? July. July of 2011? Uh-huh. Okay. <coughs> I can't stand my hands. <coughs> I don't feel good. I believe it. think we should do to, to find out what happened as as policemen, as detectives, what do you think we should be doing? Should we do you have an idea what you would like us to do? What could I want you to do? Zunik deflects by answering a question with another question. By speaking, she is giving the appearance of being cooperative without giving any actual information. Distraught, Parker Bell fired a 40 caliber pistol into the floor, sending the room, which included several civilians, into a panic as people ducked for cover. Well, it's, it's just a question. That's all it is. Sometimes people have thoughts about what they would like the police to do. You know, you would want us to get to the bottom of it, right, and find out what happened. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, speaking with the other the other kids, um, you know, we've 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 uh, talked to them, and and they've uh, they've talked to us, and that's why we're talking to you now, and we want to see what you have to say about the whole thing. There's always two sides to every story. went down to get the meds and that upset Lisa for some reason, maybe you didn't ask. I don't know what the policy is with the house, if you're supposed to ask or if you thought, well, she's sleeping or maybe she won't know I'm just going to slip in here. And I think if, if she was laying down in the bed, I don't know if she could see somebody if they very quietly just stepped into that bathroom. They might not even see the, a person do that. Now, are you supposed to ask before you get meds? It really doesn't matter. I usually ask. 
You usually do though? Yeah. But I mean, is that a policy of hers that says, hey, don't go get the meds without telling me? No. No. Because I've gotten, I've broken before. How, how many of those things would you take a day? If you get headaches, how, how many would you take? It depends on the severity. Okay, let's say if it was really bad. I would take four. Four, four at a time? No. Just through the day? Yes. Spread, spread out. Okay. That's just a lot of work. I'm sorry to this loud. Um, four or five a day. Um, has she ever told you maybe that's too many to take? I've taken four at one time, but that's because I, I could barely even walk. Okay. But that was a long time ago. Oh, okay. I mean, that, at that house, that's where on Chagrin, or is it a different house? No, it's Chagrin. That's Chagrin? Brick, can you remember, do you remember anything backwards from before the ambulance? Do you remember the police arriving? You know, you know policemen in uniform, mm -hmm. right? No. None of that? You were arrested at the house. I was? In handcuffs. Gunpoint. Gunpoint? Yes. Do you remember any of that? Let me just help you step back. You, you, you mind? Before you got in the ambulance, you were in the house, and the officers arrived. Megan was, was very scared and called us on the 911. Do you remember anything? You had their guns drawn. You were ordered to the ground. You had a knife in your hand. Did I remember that, that trigger anything else? Do you remember the girls? Do, do you remember Lee? Do you remember anything in that bedroom, in Lisa's bedroom? No. I believe you were downstairs in Lisa's bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. Lisa, downstairs in the bedroom is where you were at. In the bedroom. And that's where Lisa was hurt. On the floor there. None of that. No. Okay. Uh, so I just want to let you know what happened. That's what happened. That's, a, that's what I know for sure was happening. You don't remember anything beyond that? Let me, let me ask this question about what you were wearing. You remember putting gloves on? Uh, yeah, because it was cold. Okay. That house was really cold and I'm always cold. Anybody will tell you that. Okay. So you have, they're like little isotoner type gloves? They they're real thin, but they're probably enough to keep your hands warm. Black? Yeah, and I am because I use my iPod, and that way I can use it. Okay. Um, is that pretty normal? You like to wear those when it's cold out? When it's cold in the house, whatever? I mean, I don't know. It just started getting cold now. Yeah, okay. I understand. And I'm always freezing cold. I'm starting to get a cold. You remember having them on? Tonight? Okay. Well, that's a good thing. That's part of your memory. Remember you had your gloves on? something that 
do you kind of remember a little bit, even if it's just a little foggy? The mess is it. I promise you. What's that? The mess is it. I promise you. After I got them, she the bottle of gets them. Put the cat back on. And that's it. That's it, huh? Okay. Would you tell us if you remembered? Yes. Okay. I can barely see you. Just see you more. Where are your glasses at normally? On oh, my face. Yeah, do you, do you usually have them all, at all times? Yeah, I can't see without it. Do you recall seeing any glasses? No. Alright. If we locate them, we'll find them. If we can give them to you, we will. Can you see distance at all? Uh, nothing at all. No, uh, not even up close. I can see up close, but it's very blurry. I'll have to like adjust. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, but uh, they. Anything else that you can remember at this point? Alright. Concerns are for a lot of people right now. But right now, I ask you a concern. Are you, are you okay right now? Are you, are you feel like hurting yourself? I want to make sure you're not suicidal. Okay. If you were, would you tell me? Okay. And I, I want you to tell me if you started having a change, okay? Or, or any of my partners, any guys in the uniform. They're all good people, okay? Are you warm enough back there? Do you need we'll get you a blanket. Cold. Yeah, we'll get you a blanket. And Do we have a blanket already or none? You don't have a blanket? Oh my gosh. How'd that happen? happen? Do you want to know what... I can tell you what's going to happen from here right now? I mean, do you have questions for me? I mean, you right, David? Yeah. I mean, or for right now, we're yeah. still doing our investigation, but you're under arrest. Um, you know, Lisa's dead, and it appears that you're responsible for that at this time. So that's what the charge is going to be. But at that point, you're going to spend a weekend in jail, the county jail. We're not going to stay here all weekend, all right? And you'll have a court hearing probably on Monday. And at that time, they'll look to see if you have a bond and what to do, all right? You ever been in trouble like this before? Or find another one like this? You ever been arrested before? What for? I don't know. I have a different on record. Yeah. Okay. We know you're no longer a juvenile, correct? <laughs> what? You, you, said know you're you know you're an adult now, right? You had a birthday so in October? Yeah. Um, there's a... Do you understand what I just said? Okay. There's a button in the in where you're at there, and if you think of something you want to tell us, you push the button and tell the dispatcher you want to talk to one of the detectives. Okay. All right. Bring the water with you. Like it, John? Yeah. Let me get sure I get you that and get you some Kleenex. And <laughs> just want your hands in the towel. So where's the blanket, John? Uh, let me look at that. Do you help me? Yes, what would you like? More of these? Are you being truthful with us? Okay. You don't recall anything else besides uh, no problems or no seeing anybody else? Nobody arguing with Lisa? No. Okay. Let me make a couple of these for you. Well, it is what it is right now. We're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna have to deal with it, okay? Do <laughs> some serious things, and, but um, you open the door. I'm gonna get you a fresh roll. Ow!
Dr. Zunick continues to deny any memory of committing the murder. The detectives inform her that she is under arrest and let her know what can be expected to happen in the near future. Spending months in jail, Zunick eventually agreed to a plea deal that included testifying against Kevin Knopfel, who she said encouraged her to commit the murder and told her how to do it. Zunick claims that they had a sexual relationship and that he told her he couldn't leave Lisa because she would gain custody of the girls. A few months after she was arrested, Sabrina told police that she was willing to talk in exchange for a sentence that allowed for the possibility of parole after 30 years instead of life in prison without the possibility of parole. In August 2014, Sabrina Zunick pleaded guilty to aggravated murder. She was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. Public records show that she will be eligible for parole in 2042, when she will be 47 years old. Kevin Knopfel was charged with conspiracy to commit aggravated murder and complicity to aggravated murder, as well as six counts of sexual battery. Kevin pleaded not guilty. After a deliberation of nearly 10 hours, the jury declared him guilty and he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 30 years. <laughs> 